Hi everyone, Empress Justice here with a new moon reading in Ottara Ashara for the 21st of the 1st, 2023. Now, as I'm filming this, it is actually the day of the new moon, but it will become the new moon at 5 to 9 Greenwich Mean Time tonight. So it hasn't actually reached its peak yet. It will reach its peak around 9 o'clock in the evening. And with the new moon in Otara Ashara in Capricorn, also the sun is here, unsurprisingly. And we have Perva Palguni rising. Now, what can this tell us about the overall vibes that we can look forward to for the next two weeks? Well, what this means is that with Otara Ashara being in Capricorn with both the sun and the moon, it means that we're in for a very austere time. Now, the meaning of Uttara Ashada is basically to be undefeated. But in order to be undefeated, our bodies must be uncorrupted. Our minds must be unblurred. So this is a time of supreme focus. It's also a time of supreme influence where action speaks louder than words. And when you have Purva Ashada in the ascendant in the mix, it becomes even more clear that actions are more important than words because Purva Palguni represents the beauty of movement. So for the next two weeks or for the next 30 days, as long as this energy is likely to last, it's all about our actions and it's all about us being paired back in terms of anything superf superfluous that doesn't assimilate with the true core nature of our being. Because Purva Palguni in action also represents the anima animus. Now, it's been said that the most feminine type of woman has masculinity in her and the most masculine man has femininity in him. With Purva Palguni, how this is expressed is in women being a bit more ambitious, competitive, uh, sexually minded. And with men, it results in them being a bit more communal or being more receptive to women, um, you know, respecting women a little bit more than the average guy, right? So at this time, we are all being reduced down to our anima animus essence. Now, I know what people think of Freud or Carl Jung. I know people think they're frauds, but I think there's something in what they've discussed about the shadow aspects of the self. Because as much as Uttara Ashada is about the superego, um, it's not about the superego of the world. It's about the superego of spirit. And you can only reach the superego of spirit when all the superfluous material shit falls away. So this is, about, this is a real time of austerity when it comes to Uttara Ashada. It's a time of austerity. And it's a time of really getting to know our deeper shadow selves. Anything in our lives, they actually have to assimilate with that shadow self. Because that is what lays a strong foundation for us to influence the world in a real and meaningful way. So no more pretending to be something we're not in accordance with the superego of this society. Now we have to adhere to the superego of spirit. We have to adhere to our shadow selves or our emotions, which is, as I've always said, is the direct line to spirit. So right now, it's all about how when material life is, is you know, is paired back, because, again, January is a very tricky month for finances. When our finances are stripped back, when all our luxuries are stripped back, we're revealed for who we truly are. And where our strengths and weaknesses truly lie. Now, when it comes to us being, you know, in receipt of what we love most and who we love most, what we often find is that love helps us reach our fullest potential, but it doesn't reveal the true essence of who we are. The true essence of who we are is revealed in hardship, in lack. Now, it's been said that ha having nothing builds character. I don't, I don't believe that at all. But it reveals the essence of a person. So that is what we have to look forward to for the next two weeks astrologically. We have to look forward to a time where the true aspects of our nature are revealed. And this is from the new moon onwards. 
But for right now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to discuss with you the revelations, meaning the latter half of January, which goes into even more detail. All right, so for January revelations, which is the latter half of January from 16th, which is just gone from the 16th to the 31st of January, we have these four cards right here. We have the High Priestess from the In Between Tarot. We have the Two of Sticks from the Hoodoo Tarot, which is the Two of Wands. We have the King of Pentacles, which is from... Um, sorry, I've got to look up the name. Uh, it's Cats Rule the Earth Tarot. And from Sybil's Oraculum, we have Militarium and Strategy. Now, for the next two weeks, is it's actually a very complex time because potential is being grown within us. Remember, we've been boiled down to our essence during this time. So we are being reborn in a sense, but it's a process that is precarious and it's not necessarily... Um, guaranteed that it will be successful success is most likely but it's not guaranteed right now for the astrological placements which i'm going to read into first before i get into the notes of the cards um we have rohini moon shravana ascendant and shravana sun now rohini in taurus um, in its natural place in the moon. And then we have Shravana, Ascendant and Sun, which are both Capricorn. Um, not only are they Earth signs, but they are also moon dominant placements. Now, moon dominant placements are highly intuitive and they are highly connected to the world around them. They're the type of people who have telepathic abilities, who can see into the future way before anybody else can see, in, see into it. And... When it comes to men, in particular, um, Shravana represents chosen one energy. Uh, these men are usually very humble, very respectful, but quite strong and blunt in a way that people recognize and people respect. So Shravana is a, a sort of gentle but strong energy, whereas Rohini is um, very ferociously emotional, but actually quite vulnerable. So what we have is a mixture of vulnerable emotion and strong inner conviction, whilst at the same time experiencing the most heightened intuition that we have ever experienced. So by the time we reach the end of January, we will have this incredibly heightened sense of our own intuition. Our emotions will be incredibly strong, which could make us more vulnerable, but then it's balanced out with this inner integrity that Shravana reminds us of or bring, you know or brings out within us so shravana brings out that focus and that drive but it's a gentle type of determination it's not the type of determination that tries to get one over on others or tries to dominate it's simply the persistence of hard work and the persistence of being you know a decent human being so it's basically, that's what we're dealing with. That's the energy we're dealing with for the next two weeks. And yeah, the, yeah, that's basically the energy we're dealing with, with the, for the next two weeks. With, in Rohini Moon, it represents that earthly, sensual femininity that comes from pure emotion and pure feeling and experiencing those feelings intensely, like one at a time. But then Shravana represents a more distilled, aspect of that lunar energy it's more distilled it's more in control it's more balanced out because remember um the moon is associated with cancer and yet shravana in capricorn is a moon dominated sign so at its highest level the moon represents this balance between emotional investment and intuitive knowing with having your own integrity and having your own determination with regards to seeing your dreams and ambitions being ambitions being met all right so we have this wonderful balance happening with our sun and ascendant that is likely to overtake any emotional vulnerability that we might be feeling simply because rohini is in the moon whereas the the ascendant and sun are both in shravana 
which means we're more, more likely to be emotionally balanced and emotionally um, capable of realising our goals than we are to be led astray by our emotions. Well, most of us anyway, not all of us. So that was for the astrological placements. And now what I've got to do is talk about the cards. So what I got from these cards is being in a stage of growth, but it's passive, it's not active. Because remember, both Rohini and Shravana are ultimately passive, passive nakshatras in passive astrological signs. So what this represents right here is growth indeed taking place, but it feels like we're waiting for something important to happen. It feels like intuitively we're in that sort of meeting period or in that sort of um, on the border between our old lives and our new ones. Now, this represents the new life that we're, that we're about to step into, a new life of growth, of abundance, of wealth, because we've got the sun and we've got the earth here. So this is about wealth, ambition, our career. And then for this, we've got the water and we've got the moon representing air and air and water over here so we're crossing from a world of self-denial and and being more selfless in our endeavors or in our motivations for what we do in the outside world we're crossing over um to a time where we are going to be more physically ambitious and more dynamic but it's still going to be in a way that's relatively passive. It's not going to be in a way that's over the top, you know, struggling to work hard and all the, all the rest of it. It's just that we may find that given how powerful our physical and emotional intuition is, we might find opportunities landing in our lap and it will probably be in, in our best interest to take those opportunities to take those opportunities and to just go with the flow when it comes to where those opportunities lead us. So with, with this, once again, we're in that cross, we're, we're in that in-between space between our old lives, um, born by self-sacrifice of what we want and, you know, sacrificing ourselves inwardly. And then we're crossing over into that path to outwardly get what we want. Truth be told, right, we're still in that space of wanting to serve. Like deep within ourselves, we're still in that place of wanting to serve. It's just that outwardly, it becomes more productively realized because then we realize we have to be just a little bit more selfish and a little bit more single-minded. So this right here, it represents growth. It represents change. It represents us taking our selfless motivations and turning them into self-assertive actions in our everyday lives, which is the way it's supposed to be. Um, our intuition, once again, is going to be peak. It's going to be very strong. And most of what we achieve is going to be passive. It's going to be a lot more strategic than it is, you know, being dynamic and gung-ho and all the rest of it. Uh, still a lot is being done because these two right here are connected with the Empress period. So it's not like nothing's being done. It's just that we are more inclined to go with the flow of our intuition than to force anything, which is the best way for us to be right now. Okay, so that was for the High Priestess card. So now I've got to discuss the Two of Sticks. Now, the Two of Sticks is usually, it usually signifies partnerships that are in line with our life purpose or partnerships that are based on taking calculated risks or partnerships that are rooted in mutual respect of one another. I do feel that this card though, is not talking necessarily about relationships, but it's talking about sort of accidentally falling into new alliances. Once again, it's not something that we're forcing. We accidentally find ourselves falling into new alliances or falling into strong sisterhoods or brotherhoods because our inner intentions are leading us. So whatever our inner intentions are leading us towards, those are the type of people that gravitate towards us. And with that, 
it enables our purpose it enables what our long-term goals are and it gives us that added strength and that added determination to keep going right so this energy right here it leads to us realizing exactly what we're meant to do in this life and how we're going to proceed forward so that's the two of sticks with the king of pentacles or the king of pentacles as i like to call it um i want to chin scratch them so bad <laughs> so cute i can't okay they're so cute jesus look at them oh my gosh all right so the king of pentacles right this cutie right here um it represents us knuckling down now this for me represents shravana energy okay this represents shravana energy of having that strong, sure determination. Now, the King of Pentacles has a reputation for being boring, which I don't think is fair. I don't think it's fair that the King of Pentacles or the King of Pentacles is known as boring because somebody has to think about the bigger picture. Somebody has to think about the details. And with this card right here and this card right here, uh, for these two weeks of January, it's going to be all about strategy. It's not just going to be about using our intuition. It's also going to be about managing our budgets. It's going to be about um, thinking of different ways to elevate our business. It's thinking about how we can get that promotion. It's thinking about multiple streams of income. Now, we've seen, you know, just by this last month alone, how much money is really worth. Not a damn thing. But we realize that in order to build up our assets or, you know, build up our resources, we need to elevate our streams of income and we need to elevate our form of trade. So this is going to come into play for a lot of people who are self-employed, um, even for a lot of people who are working. If you're working, even if you're really, really struggling to make ends meet, because I know there's quite a few of you working about two or three jobs that are really, really struggling to like just even stay, keep your head above water right now, you might be thinking of new ways to bring in more money or bring in more resources. So all of this has to be taken into consideration, especially seeing as Otara Ashada as the new moon and the sun today on the 21st, especially considering how austere everything is now and how everything is being pulled back in order to reveal the real us what we build in place of what we've lost it has to be in line with who we truly are in the long term so it involves kind of re reworking our plans materially and reworking our plans to ensure that we're doing exactly what we need to do for the benefit of our long-term goals now, I've got the Sybil's Oraculum booklet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the Oraculum with regards to the Militarium card, okay? So for the Militarium card, we've got admitting how far you're willing to go and how much you're willing to sacrifice should precede all plans that is Shravana in a nutshell. That's this in a nutshell. All right. So the divinatory meaning says, first decide that you will find a way to get what you want. Brainstorm ideas and ask for advice from others who have succeeded of what you're trying to accomplish. So that's the king of pentacles again. And that's Shravana again, because Shravana is more inclined to seek out mentorship or more inclined to even be given mentorship because of their chosen one status right archetypally speaking so you're more likely we're more likely to gain mentors at this time we're more likely to gain mentors in our corner or at least go out and look for mentors that's the first thing the second thing is is that with the new moon in Otara Ashara and the sun in Otara Ashara beginning from today kind of pairing everything back even pairing back the fake image that we've put out into the world, even pairing that back, now we're being asked to think about what we are really and truly prepared to sacrifice 
in order to realize our long-term ambitions. And that is what this is all about. People always think about what they want. Now, it's, it's no shade because I'm human, we're all human, and we all think about what we want. But the thing that we tend not to think about is what we are prepared to sacrifice in order to have what we want. That's the thing that we tend not to think about. We're not, th- you know, that's what we need to think about because Uttara Ashada is saying, in order to properly sense and shape your own future, this new moon demands that you answer the question, what are you prepared to sacrifice in order to make your dreams a reality? What are you prepared to give up? Now is a time of austerity. Now is a time of paring back shit that you absolutely do not need in order to keep those things that truly reveal who you are. What are you prepared to lose? So that is for the uh, January revelations. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the the moon of the moment, the new moon in Uttara Ashada in Capricorn. And now we come to the moon of the moment, which is the new moon in Uttara Ashada in Capricorn, which takes place today on the 21st of the 1st, 2023, and reaches its peak at 2055, which is 855 Greenwich Mean Time, um, at night. So as I'm recording this, we're not in the new moon's peak yet, but we are in Uttara Ashada. Um, at this time, we are in Uttara Ashada in Capricorn. It has just come over to Uttara Ashada in Capricorn. And also the sun is here, unsurprisingly. And we have Purva Pavaguni Ascendant. Now, I have already discussed this astrological placement um, briefly with regards to how it will affect us for the next 30 days. But I'm actually going to go into more detail. Before I read into any of these cards, I'm going to go into more detail about the astrological placements of the new moon in Uttara Ashara. So, of course, we've got the sun conjunct the moon, as always. It's a new moon. It's always going to happen like that, which means the energies of Uttara Ashada, feeling strong in ourselves, regenerating ourselves, reprogramming ourselves in accordance with our deepest human need or our deepest foundations. It all plays a part here and we are all advised to jump on that train, to pair everything back, to really ensure that everything that we have in our lives adheres to our inner self. Now, this is the interesting thing about Uttara Ashara in Capricorn, okay? Like Shravana, with regards to a moon dominant, being a moon dominant nakshatra, Uttara Ashara is a sun dominant nakshatra. The sun is also in opposition symbolically to Saturn. So when you have a Saturn dominant not a Saturn dominant, but when you have a Saturn sign, Capricorn, within a sun dominant nakshatra, Uttara Ashara, what happens is that there is a balance between super egos. There is a balance between the super ego of the world, which is reflected in Capricorn. Um, no, actually, a super ego of the world, which is reflected in the sun. And the super ego of spirit, which is reflected in Saturn. Okay, so you've got two instances where two super egos meet, they come together and they decide, okay, we're going to let the rest fall away. What is it that most adheres to our true character and our true integrity? That's exactly what makes Uttara Ashada the undefeated or the eternally victorious. It's not just the desire to seek peace above all else, even though seeking peace does make you undefeatable. Um, It it does ultimately make you undefeated, the fact that you will always seek peace and you won't play the same game that everyone else is playing. That's how you usually win, right? So Uttara Ashada is not just about peace. It's also about the integrity of our spiritual superego, which is in Saturn, and our material superego, which is the sun. 
okay now people usually associate the sun with being spiritual and saturn being material because saturn is a darker planet and the sun is the sun it's a luminary but the truth of the matter is is that the sun is much better much better adjusted to the um much better adjusted and much more invested in the world's inner workings than saturn is but when you've got capricorn and that capricorn sign being sun dominant it means that you have a healthy understanding of both the spirits the spirits super ego and the world's super ego you combine them together you create a, a heightened sense of morality and a moral astuteness that is borderline unassailable so you having that tech integrity within yourself having merged the two that is absolutely going to be crucial for the new moon and we're advised to move towards that because whatever it is that our spiritual super ego and our worldly super ego tell us together that's exactly what's going to lead us on the road to success and on the road to realizing our own undefeatable qualities and it will lead us to having much more powerful influence over our lives than we usually do. But in order to realize the full potential, you know, not our full potential, but the essence of our potential, in order to realize it, everything we, again, everything that we pretend to be, it has to fall away. And it does quite unceremoniously, though. That's something we have to watch out for. Now, yeah, the rest has to fall away. Any destructive influences in our lives that have to fall away, anything that doesn't fall in line with the greater good of everyone has to fall away. That's where our integrity lies. It's like I said before, with the high priestess, with the revelations cards, it's about self-denial within and self-assertion without that is sun dominant signs in a nutshell and that's especially the case with with uttara ashara as a sun dominant akshatra okay so the fact that it's in capricorn this balance is represented i feel a bit more keenly than uttara ashara in sagittarius so it's that balance that keeps us honest that keeps us in our morality but at the same time, we don't sacrifice morality for our inner integrity either because of that balance. It is here that we really need to realise the true essence of who we are, again, in order to fulfil our long-term potential. But that's just, um, that's just the placements, like the sun and <laughs> The, the sun conjunct the moon, it, you know, it's, it's always encouraging us to go down that path. And to remember that path and to stay in our integrity and to stay in our internal selflessness. Okay. So we've got the moon trining Rohini in Mars for the new moon. Um, which I find interesting because Rohini is the essence of, uh, you know, of lunar energy. And yet it's in Mars. Usually when Mars is in Rohini... Um, there's a steady stream of emotions aimed towards one direction. Rohini is not just a wildly emotional nakshatra. When it's in certain placements or when, when certain planets are within it, like Mars, it takes the form of conserving all your energy. It's very snake-like. It's conserving all your energy, storing it all up in, in you know, in your storing it all up in the kundalini and then releasing it at the right time that's why rohini is all about one emotion at a time because it's actually storing up energy in a very similar way to ashlesha it's a similar way to ashlesha does it, the way that ashlesha does it it's just that whilst ashlesha releases that energy much more slowly and much more fluidly rohini is just like Pow! So Rohini is, is got it's got a lot of power energy in Mars. So be prepared 
for our actions to be powerfully directed, powerfully manifested. Whatever it is that we do within our actions, it should be more steady because it's in Taurus, but the likelihood is, is that whatever we do at this time, it has a thousand times more energy than it usually does because one action that we take at a time, we are likely to take that action extremely intensely. But the fact that it's trying the moon, is that's a very good sign because what we actually do with Uttara Ashada's energy is that we have intense focus towards ensuring that our long-term goals are met that our inner integrity is honoured. So that action of honouring our own integrity and honouring where we're supposed to be going in life, that becomes amplified and we end up making really big moves without realising we're doing it. Now, this thing here is about gradual progress, but the progress is not that gradual because our actions are so focused and so potent and so so heavily directed in one direction so it's a good thing in this case that the moon in Uttara Ashada in Capricorn is trining Mars in Rohini in Taurus it's actually a good thing here okay because it means that we're like we're we're ready to channel all our energy all the energy that we want to spend going into our long-term goals and our long-term plans, those actions are likely to be very, very powerful. So that's a good thing. We just want to be careful with it because once again, Rohini stores up energy and releases the energy one time. So it stores it up one time and then releases it one time. It's not like Ashlesha. Rohini energy is something that we really need to be careful with. Okay? So... There's a sextile too to Uttara Bhadrapada in Jupiter. Now, I love this, right? And the reason I love this is because both Uttara Ashada and Uttara Bhadrapada, they represent everything being boiled down to its sacred essence. They do it in different ways, right? But both Uttaras ultimately reflect everything being boiled down to its sacred essence. So the fact that Uttara Ashada Moon is sextiling Uttara Bhadrapada Jupiter, it means that there is an excellent amount of good fortune that lies in us, you know, following our true integrity and earning our stripes rather than trying to attain things in roundabout ways or trying to attain things in a way that is most reflective of our fake selves so there is a lot of good luck here there's a lot of good luck to be found um we're more likely to find abundance that falls in line with our true selves rather than finding abundance within what or who it is we pretend to be so there's a lot of good fortune in store for us when we follow the new moon's direction so it's really good. It's really good energy. It's, it's encouraging energy. Um, but now what I have to do is I've got to read the cards to ascertain exactly how that translates. Then we can go from there. So for the notes for the new moon, I have... Okay, first of all, let me go into the cards. So for the cards, we've got the nine of coins in between the nine and ten of coins. Sorry, get that crumb away. So that's nine of coins in between nine and ten for the in-between tarot. And then we've got the tower card, which in this case is the big house card from the hoodoo tarot. And then we've got the two of wands from the cats rule the earth tarot. Another chinny scratcher, like they're so cute. I can't. And then we... <laughs> they are so cute. And then we've got um, progressors, gradual progress for Sybil's oraculum. We've got the vocal cords here. For some reason, I get Uttara Bhadrapada from this, but let's let's um, let's see what we can get from the overall cards. And I'm going to read from the notes first, okay? So from the notes, I've got better lifestyle, 
long-term long-term success communication meltdown malicious gossip exposure online acting on your inspirations gathering with others to celebrate endless fighting butting heads being headstrong beautiful home strong family put a pin in established wealth emotional meltdown dangerous woman manifesting a new place to live new job offer taking things one step at a time and surely getting there so what can we glean from what the notes have told us it gleans that once again everything that i said checks out we are manifesting new abundance and new wealth in our lives but it's a very different kind of wealth and abundance it's not the type that's frivolous it's the type that actually falls in line with the real essence of who we are that's what what we're attracting into our lives so it may surprise us the people that come into our lives the circumstances that come into our lives it may actually surprise us what we have manifested now Coming into the new moon, we may find ourselves feeling quite satisfied with what we've manifested in spite of things not being as great as they should be. Like, you know, we may find ourselves still being satisfied with the work that we've put in in spite of a very austere time or a a time of relative hardship. We might find ourselves feeling rather satisfied with the work that we've put in. And with very good reason, because everything that we've done up to this point, it's leading towards long term growth. So we may find ourselves feeling proud of ourselves, justifiably so. Um, We may actually enjoy what we have in, in spite of the fact that we don't have frivolous stuff, but we might actually still enjoy what we have materially. But this is where it gets interesting, because this right here the malicious gossip, the online exposure, the emotional meltdowns, the dangerous passive people, that's what dangerous woman represents to me, the dangerous passive people in the world, they're being exposed. There are people who are covert narcissists, there are people who, you know, play on their victimhood in order to hide their perpetration, they are exposed and they're exposed bad and this is the thing right my thing is this right it's one thing for you to kind of um stay out of trouble and mind your business and you try to do the right thing in order you know for its own sake because that's what uttara ashada represents doing the right thing for its own sake and uttara bhadrapada as well It's one thing for you to want to do the right thing for its own sake. And it's one thing for you to, you know, to realize your inner grace and to kind of act in accordance with that. But it's another thing entirely to use your vulnerability to hurt other people. If there are anybody out there who have been using their vulnerability to hurt other people, you need to repent. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a feeling that for many of the people that I'm reading for, it's not actually you that's using your vulnerability or your victimhood to get away with shit. But for those who are, they are exposed. And for those who try to um, abuse their power as well, it's not just passive people who play victim to cover up their wrongdoing. It's also people who have abused their power. They are exposed. But the problem is, is that them being exposed, it doesn't humble them. It doesn't make them learn a lesson. It just makes them more belligerent and more likely to be violent. So this is something that we have to watch out for. As the inner nature of ourselves are truly revealed, those who find themselves being revealed for exactly what they are, instead of being humbled by this experience, they're more likely to begin to become even more destructive, to become even more hateful. So this is something that we have to protect ourselves against. Even though things are working out quite well for us, the truth is unceremoniously revealed about a lot of people. And when that happens, 
those people who wanted to have have their way and get away with it, they become more violent instead of learning a lesson, which means a lot of people might have to watch their backs. Okay, uh, I'm sorry to say that, but that's that's just the way things are. A lot of people might have to watch their backs. But the two of wands here means powerful and strong alliances are being built. It means that when we're, we're working smarter and not harder. So that passive energy that some people are using in order to be, in order to destructively control others, there are other people who are using that passive energy in order to get somewhere and in order to honor their inner integrity. Now, the two of ones came up with January revelations. The two of ones came up then too. Um, it has round about the same meaning, meaning that when we pay attention to our long-term goals, like we do here, when we pay attention to our long-term goals, we're more likely to actually meet people of sorts that match our internal energy, not the people that we're trying to be. So that leads us to this. Now, this is supposed to reflect gradual process, the progress, okay? But there's nothing gradual about this. Uttara Ashada's energies, along with that sextile with Uttara Bajrapada, Uttara Bajrapada Jupiter, the Uttaras are having a bit of a moment here, okay? So the, there is nothing gradual about the progress that is being made when the inner nature of so many people are being exposed right now. There's nothing gradual about it. For those who are living in their integrity, and I've said this before, for those who honor Uttara Ashada's energies and don't try to be sneaky and don't try to be underhand, for you, the spoils are there. It's just that in this case, the spoils are long term. They're not short term. Whilst you're able to perceive the blessings immediately, just like you, just like many of us, the blessings that you received, are, you know, are received at their essence. It's up to us and it's up to the love that we put into these things that we receive, all these people that we receive. It's up to us to help those things reach their full potential. And I'm happy to say that for the most part, a lot of people are honoring that and a lot of people are nurturing and putting their love into whatever it is that they've received and helping it to reach its full potential at this point. I'm very happy to say that at this new moon, a lot of people are already doing this. For a lot of the people that I'm reading for, you've already decided that you're going to take the blessings that you receive or the essence of the blessings that you receive and you're going to put all your love and all your attention into it in order to grow it. You've already made that decision and you've already made that choice. You didn't actually need me to tell you. So you're already doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're already you're already on that trajectory, except for some people who are, you know, I'm probably not reading for them quite honestly, except for those people who are, who may find themselves exposed because they've abused their power rather than using it responsibly. So this is it. And now that we've had a look at the new moon in Uttara Ashara, now we've got a look at the first quarter moon in Barani. So the first quarter moon in Barani is happening on the 28th of January 2023 at 10.20am. That's when it will be at its peak. And whilst the first quarter moon is in Barani, it will be uh, conjunct with Ashvini Ascendant. And it will be squared Shravana Sun. Now, once again, before I get into the cards, I'm going to get into the astrological placements. So we've got the moon squared the sun. Now, I've explained this a million times in my readings. Whenever the moon is squaring the sun, it means that they're on the same page, but they don't realize they're on the same page. In terms of Shravana and Barini, it represents the refined feminine in the form of Barini and the refined masculine in the form of Shravana, or rather it reflects the anima animus, just refined versions of them. So with Barini, 
Barony represents the feminine energy that's refined, but it's the refined feminine animus. It is fiery, potent female energy that is strict and demanding, but also intensely loving and intensely caring. So true love, death-defying love, is found um, more towards a barony woman's life, more in a barony woman's life than in a barony man's life. But death-defying love, the ferocity of love at its truest and most potent is found in barony. That's the reflection of who the woman's animus is. Her shadow self is that of a ferocious woman who may be mature in her outlook, but who is strong and who is fierce in the manifestation of her wisdom. Now, with Shravana representing the refined masculine, uh, Shravana represents the masculine anima, representing the gentle and respectful nature of the masculine form, revealing itself through being a little bit of a saviour figure, um, empathising with the people around him, kind of making room for them emotionally whilst physically being ferocious in defending them, especially the vulnerable. But this is where Barony and Shravana are kind of the same. Barony feminine energy and Shravana masculine energy both want to accomplish the same thing. They want to protect the vulnerable and they want to protect the potential of something. They just have different ways of doing it. Whereas Barony is strict with the vulnerable and, you know, enforces strict rules to ensure everybody is on the same page. Shravana is gentle with the vulnerable and strict against those who would seek to harm the vulnerable. So they are both on the same page here. Barony and Shravana are ultimately about protecting the potential of something by any means necessary, but they do it through expressions of their own essence. So with the sun and moon squared, once again, we're being asked to remind ourselves that we are actually on the same page with what needs to be done. Our intuition might want to be a bit more ferocious and might want to, you know, might want to sort of enforce rules a bit more strictly, but the sun part of our nature will want to be more balanced and gentler. When it's a first quarter moon or anything to do with a full moon, anything that's waxing, we are being advised to follow the sun's energy, which in this case means following, following Shravana's energy and following the lead of the gentle and refined masculine. All right. Now, this doesn't just go for men and women or femmes and masculine. It goes for anybody non-binary or gender fluid. OK, so that was uh, the moon square the sun. So the moon square the sun um, reflects basically like we're all on the same page, like we're not we're not in disagreement with each other here. OK, now. The moon is also squared Pluto. Um. I'm not going to lie to you, the way I've written it down, I can't remember if it's actually squared uh, Shravana Sun. It is squared Shravana Sun, but I can't remember if it's actually squared Uttara Ashada in Pluto or Shravana in Pluto. So yes, it was Uttara Ashada that I was thinking of with the moon, <laughs> the moon squared Pluto. It was four degrees in Capricorn, so yes, it will. It is uh, moon squared Uttara Ashara. So once again, with any square, it implies that both the moon and whatever it is opposed or whatever it is squared, not opposed, but squared, whatever it's squared with is something that is, is, it is firmly on the same page with. The way I interpret moon squared sun is that there are two people who are on the same page but don't even realize they're reading the same book because they're interpreting it differently. So with the moon squared Pluto, with barony squared Uttara Ashara, 
whereas Shravana is about protecting the vulnerable or ultimately protecting the potential of something, which is why they're so gung-ho on reaching their highest aims or reaching their highest potential, Uttara Ashada actually represents the more strict enforcements of the superego, not even just in terms of the world at large, but also in terms of spirit. So Barony honours the superego in the same way that Uttara Ashada does. They just have different ways of doing it. Once again, Uttara Ashada is more about internal mastery than outwardly um, outwardly trying to realise its own vision. So Uttara Ashada is very contained and very calm in the way that they do things. And with Pluto being here, the inex inexplicable force that is driving us is making us more refined, making us more restrained in comparison to the moon's energy, which wants to just, you know, wants to just impose our will on everything. So ironically, even though the moon and Pluto are absolutely squared, there's this balance of energy here of us realizing that yeah we, we do need to sort of enforce rules and make sure the super egos are upheld but the way in which we do that is we're more actually more inclined to realize to realize that through our own self-actualization rather than imposing anything on anybody so with the moon squared pluto once again our emotions and our deeper primal impulses are on the same page and it's just a matter of realizing my deeper impulses need to have rules established. My deeper impulses need to have rules established, but my, you know, my overall impulses, my ego and my ego feels the need to protect the vulnerable in order to ensure these rules are kept in place. It's like prioritizing children first in order to you know and making rules around their safety rather than the other way around it's that type of energy right that we're dealing with when it comes to the moon squared with pluto and the moon squared with the sun it's very much realizing that we want to enforce rules by protecting the vulnerable you know Ultimately, we want to protect the vulnerable first, and then what we want to do is enforce rules through containment of our own being and through having control over our own selves and manifesting that through action, actually demonstrating self-control through action rather than trying to impose that self-control on others. So, yeah, the moon square, the sun and the moon square, Pluto, absolutely on the same page. So we've got the moon trine perva ashada in Mercury, which kind of reinforces everything that I've been stating about our actions meaning more than our words. Because perva ashada is quite overblown verbally, it's quite verbally overblown, right? Because it's Sagittarius. So Mercury and Sag is always quite overblown in their communication. But when it comes to their actions, they tend to be more natural, more free flowing. So it, with Mercury, right, being in Perva Ashada, we'll be, we will be very, very confident in the way that we express ourselves, especially when you, you know, especially when you consider that the moon is trining Barony, um, which is another Venus dominant sign. So Perva Ashada is very confident in its expression, very confident in the way that it says things. And yet it is through our actions that Mercury in Perva Ashada will have its deepest impact. It will have its deepest in impact through what we do and not necessarily through what we say. Now, out of the um, uh, out of the fire signs, arguably, arguably, the, the irony is is that the more expressive I found and the least articulate are usually Sagittarians because they have their they have their minds closest to the ethereal realm out of all the fire signs. So they tend to be more expressive but less articulate than other signs at the same time. Um, but there's a confidence in the way that Sagittarius expresses itself and especially with Perva Ashara. Um, 
but the thing about it is is that when we don't when we let our expressions do the talking what we have to be careful of with mercury in perva ashada is that what we say it might lead us further away from what the core objective is it might lead us further away from the core subject of whatever it is that we're talking about or whatever it is that we want to do long term that's why when mercury is in perva ashada it really is best that we basically act what we want to do because actions are more likely to be natural and free-flowing now with perva ashada perva ashada is a a a desperately romantic nakshatra you see whereas barony represents death defying love in a very real sense or in a very you know sometimes the love of barony is gnarly it's not pretty it's not you know it's not flowery it's not sweep you off your feet you know so it's like out of the signs perva palguni is probably the most flowery the most classically romantic and then with barony it's gnarly it's 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 rigid it's like it's all in but perva ashada is movie it's a movie type of love that perva ashada has and we might be inclined to express that love in the most overblown grand and enchanting ways so this is another reason why we need to kind of be calm with Barony's energies because our Rahu is already aiming towards the direction of us finding true love in the gnarliest form. And then with the trying to pervert Ashada, um, it's leading us towards finding that movie star love, finding that powerful, all encompassing, I can't live without you type of love so we're already being led in that direction the last thing we want to do is chase after the rahu and not channel the key to which at this point is in Svati. and i'll get to that i'll get to that um at some point during this during this astrological read okay so with the moon trying perva ashada our communications are likely to be very very confident our actions are more likely to be more intuitive than our words and we will be gravitating towards finding our true love although in this case we need to pull back on that because the true love will come to us if there is any true love to be had or movie love to be had it will come to us we don't have to go around looking for it so it's important with the moon trine perva ashara with all this fire energy happening, that our actions speak louder than our words. And especially when it comes to living up to the potential of Uttara Ashada and Shravana. Okay, now we've got the sextile with Shatabisha Venus. Now, the sextile with Shatabisha Venus is interesting because um, we've got two horses, the energy of two horses during this time of the first quarter. The first one is Shatabisha, which is the horse Yoni. And the second one is Ashvini Ascendant, which is the horse Lingam. But we're coming back to Shatabisha for now. Shatabisha in Venus. And um, Empress Justice has a partner who is Shatabisha's son and has a mother who is Shatabisha Moon, right? The thing about Shatabisha is that Shatabisha loves you for all the things that you don't like about yourself. I know it sounds strange. I know I, it sounds really, really strange, right? But Shatabisha and Shatabisha's energies, whatever it is you truly don't like about yourself, that is what Shatabisha likes about you. That is where your genius comes from. That's where your, your you know, your your broad vision for the world comes from. That's also where your destiny comes from. It comes from all the things about yourself that you try to hide. So with Venus being in Shatabisha, we're more likely to attract that movie star love of Perva Ashada and that gnarly real, just sort of like gnarly, like twisting the knife in, but ultimately powerful love of Barony. It takes those elements and... The result is that we get that type of love that's 
you know, that takes the part of ourselves that we absolutely cannot stand. And we attract that type of love into our lives that embraces those things about ourselves that we ourselves that we absolutely cannot stand. So it's a very powerful time where the love that we attract is powerful and gnarly, but it's the kind of powerful and gnarly love that's like, I don't care if you're flawed. I, I don't care what, what you think your flaws are. Those are probably the parts of you that I love the best. Those are probably the parts of you that I cherish the most. And it's through this love that we receive through Shatabisha and Venus that will make us realize, oh shit, like this is the potential that I had all along. It will help us realize our potential. And then with, when it comes to our beauty and our fashion, which is what Venus rep also represents. And this is, this goes for anybody. This goes for masculine, feminine, doesn't matter. When it comes to our style, Shatabisha, I don't care whether they're natives, sun, rising, Shatabisha fashion is the most lit fashion there is. <laughs> argue with your mum, don't argue with me. Shatabisha fashion is lit, okay? And the reason why it's so lit is because Shatabisha understands how to take what the world deems to be beautiful, mix it in with their own personal character and come up with a look that is completely iconic. If you need any proof of that, check out Catherine O'Hara in Shit's Creek. Her looks stay being iconic. That's a classic Shatabisha quality, the most iconic looks. And it's so it seems so effortless as well. So our personal styles will take inspiration from the collective and then bring it down to our own personal interpretation of it. And what will happen is that we will come up with iconic looks of our own that stand out from the crowd and that goes once again into taking what we don't like about ourselves which is usually the things that we have most in common with other human beings taking all those things that we don't like about ourselves and turning it into a way to realize our potential so the love that comes into our lives and the beauty that we take inspiration from it takes all those things that we don't normally like about ourselves grounds them gives them an individual expression and gives us iconic looks and gives us people in our lives who ultimately enrich our lives. So this is a very, very sort of powerful and explosive time with regards to the astrological placements. And especially with that sex tell with Shatabisha Venus. Now I've got to go into the conjunction with Uranus and Rahu. Once again, our energies are going to be naturally inclined because the moon is waxing our energy is going to be naturally more inclined towards um realizing new rules and new structures built around wanting to protect the vulnerable because that's what barony is all about right we're gonna want to do it in unique and different ways and this is good but again too much emphasis on our rahu it can cause us to be led astray and it can call, it can lead to disaster when we're not careful so there is powerful energies concentrated on how we influence the masses and how the masses influence us and in turn we are going to be focused on Shatabisha's method of innovation which is a good thing but it's something that has to be used sparingly because that's not the energy that we're meant to we're meant to channel Rahu represents the objective of something and key to represents the method of getting it leads me to opposition with key to in Sparty. now luckily Sparty, like shatabisha is um rahu dominant so us channeling Sparty's energies into creating a new world or creating a new you know, a new feminine dynamic with the Barony and Rahu, like us channeling Svati, Svati's energies of non-conform, non-conformist, non-conformist thinking of, you know, genteel socialite, you know, genteel etiquette, 
or genteel social norms, taking all of that, utilizing it towards non-conformity in new communities or new areas and taking that and channeling it into the new world that we're about to step into creatively. That's the way that we can accomplish the desires of Barony, not only with the moon, but with Uranus and Rahu. That's how we accomplish those goals without getting ourselves caught up collectively. So the conjunction with the ascendant, the conjunction with the ascendant, okay. Now, again, I've got to look that up. Yeah, so the conjunction with the ascendant, in this case, is in Ashvini. I'm checking it again to see if I'm right. And yes, so... The moon in conjunct ascendant means that the first quarter moon, we're going to find our star power, is basically the long and the short of it. We're going to find our star power. We're going to find that thing about ourselves that really stands out from the rest of the crowd. So Uttara Ashada has already taken all the superfluous stuff and removed it. And now what it's being replaced with is the genuine manifestation of our star power. And then with the Ashvini Ascendant and Shatabisha Venus, it means that this first quarter moon is going to be heavily emphasized on healing. So there's a heavy, heavy emphasis on healing. There's a heavy emphasis on um you know, on gentility and self-control as a means of realizing the world that we want to come into. There's an emphasis on, you know, genteel social norms or genteel social behavior and playing along with other people's illusions in order to actually create the new world that we want to see. So it's, it's a very powerful time. The first quarter moon in Barony is an extremely powerful time. It's a time that is driven and dynamic and filled with so many people finding their true star power. It's not going to be an easy journey though. And that is what I'm going to explore when I talk about the cards in more detail. Okay, so looking at the cards for the first quarter moon in Barony, we have got the Nine of Cups here from the In-Between Tarot. We've got the Two of Coins from the Hoodoo Tarot. And also we have the Ten of Wands from the Cats Rule the World Tarot. And we also have the Detachment Card from Sybil's Oraculum. So I'm going to read the notes for these cards before I get, you know, before I download anything intuitively. So let me just, let me just do my thing. So... For the notes, we've got proud moment, fun project, middle management, popular outspoken person, getting what you want, activism, all the pieces coming together, reunion, long awaited return, several part time jobs, endurance in work, fame and fortune, gratitude, playing with money and the release of emotional attachments. That sounds like Venus and Shatabisha as well, releasing emotional attachments to anything that doesn't honour our truest selves. But also with popular, outspoken person, again, the star qualities of all of us collectively are standing out. They're just going to stand out in different ways because, of course, we're all individuals. And then with us getting what we want and all the pieces coming together, um, along with activism... Once again, when we put our when we put our money where our mouth is, which is what we're inclined to do for the first quarter moon anyway, um, there are better results that happen um, with regards to whatever it is that we're striving for long term. So all of these together, it tells me that we do have a hard road ahead of us. We do have a hard road ahead of us because when I look this up, um, it also talked about difficult work that we have to undertake and taking on too much now per the ashara 
can be actually very guilty of this. They can be very guilty of taking on too much. Barony take on too much as well, but it's nothing they can't really handle. Whereas Perva Ashara, they tend to take on too much and they burn themselves out. So this is something that we do have to watch out for for the first quarter moon in Barony. With the with this card, it talks about basically it kind of falls in line with this because with if we're taking on different things at once then the likelihood is is that we have to juggle responsibility in terms of our domestic responsibilities and also our work responsibilities or our business opportunities. So there's a really difficult juggling act that has to be observed here. Again, this is down to us um, wanting to communicate through our actions, which is the wisest thing to do, but the catch-22 of that is that we may end up doing way too much and putting way too much pressure on ourselves to accomplish everything at once. Again, this is a very successful week, okay? And from this period on, it's a very successful 30 days, but it's not without its problems and it's not without its expectations, okay? Where money is concerned, um, things are kind of chaotic. They're on the chaotic side for the first quarter moon in Barony. They're kind of on the chaotic side. They're not necessarily very settled. And it's a matter of maintaining fluidity with our bank balance and with our treatment of our money. We have to learn to be fluid. You know, there are times where we're going to need to save and there are times where we're going to need to spend. A lot of people place emphasis on saving more than spending. And I get it because... You know, if you save more than you spend, obviously, you know, there's less of a, a monetary deficit in it. But the thing is, is that everything has to happen at the right time. And we come back to Rohini. We come back to Rohini during the revelations. And we come back to the King of Pentacles with regards to Shravana, Ascendant and Sun. It's all about knowing the right timing to save and spend your money. It's not just about saving money. It's not just about managing it. Managing it is all about timing, actually, now that I think of it. Managing it, managing your money is not about just saving money, it's about timing. The thing is, money is something that you can always get back, especially if you live in a first world country like the UK or like the US or like Sweden or anywhere like that. If you live in a first world country, you will always get money back in some way or another, but time is something that you can't get back. So whatever it is that you're doing, you have to streamline your responsibilities and streamline your duties to ensure that you are saving time. That you can reach your long-term objectives more quickly and easily. Okay? Now, with this Nine of Cups right here, I did tell you guys that true love will be coming our way. And I don't necessarily mean just like romantically or in terms of other people, although that is definitely very likely um, for the first quarter moon in Barony. But it also means whatever it is that you're most passionate about, whatever lights a fire inside you is likely to manifest itself. This is the cat. This is this is the tricky part now. Whatever lights a fire inside of us for the first quarter moon in Barony we're likely to actually get it. How are we going to handle it, though? You see, this is the tricky part. The tricky part is not whether or not we get what we want. We will get what we want. But how do we handle getting what we want? How do we handle it? So we do end up having the people in our lives that, you know, really light a fire inside us. Our passionate interests take a positive turn. Um, we end up doing... We end up having a lot to do in terms of the stuff that we really enjoy doing and all the superfluous stuff gets taken out of the picture and all we're left with is things that we're actually invested in and interested in. But it's tricky because we have to think about, you know, now that there's so much passion in the air and there's so much motivation towards what it is that we really want to do, now we have to think to ourselves, well, how can I manage this? So with this, we have the answer, release emotional attachment. And that's where Shatabisha comes in because Shatabisha 
again, Shatabisha encourages us to love the parts of ourselves that we don't necessarily like. So that means releasing emotional attachment to any idealized forms of ourselves or what we bring to the table. So we are being asked to release not emotional attachment per se, but emotionally uh, emotional attachment to anything that we have idealized in our minds. So when it comes to who we are and what we want to achieve, we're being asked to release any emotional attachments to any ideals that, quite frankly, haven't served us for a long time. So what else can I see with these cards? We're being asked to focus more on the emotional rather than the physical. Once again, we're being asked to follow Shravana's lead. Our star qualities will be revealed without us trying too much. So right now we need to focus on our empathy. We need to focus on gentle determination. We need to focus on honesty without malice. Because it's with that that we can actually protect the people that we want to protect and accomplish the things that we actually want to accomplish without getting under anybody's skin. So that's it for the notes for the first quarter moon in Barony. Um, and now without further ado, I'm going to get on to the 12 signs. So hang tight. Hi Capricorn, this is for Uttara Ashara, Shravana and Danishta. So Caps. What's the haps? Well, the haps is you from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot have got the High Priestess card. So what can we get from this card in particular with regards to the next two weeks from, from the 16th like onwards, right? So what we've got from the notes is woman's wrath, psychic attack, woman in crisis, secret society, woman's group, psychic circle, and woman in a male-dominated field. Now, I've actually read for you guys before, but the video didn't take, so I wasn't able to get the footage. But when I actually read for you guys, oh, sorry, I've got to take this back a little bit. When I actually read for you guys, um, what I actually got from your reading was that you were passively accomplishing things that other people found difficult to accomplish. For the Capricorn femmes and women in particular, it felt like people were truly intimidated by you and they could see all the success that you're getting. They could see all the moves that you're making. You're not being ferocious about it. You're being very gentle, very kind, very unassuming. But people could see the progress you were being made, progress being made and they were threatened by you. So you're surrounded by a lot of people. If you're a Capricorn femme or a Capricorn woman, you're surrounded by people who are actually quite threatened by your success. And this is something that you really need to be careful of because those same people will engage in really sneaky, underhanded behavior in order to get one up on you. But the fortunate thing about all Capricorns for the next two weeks is that you guys are... You know, you, you guys are very, very shrewd and very calculating at this time. You're not just passively sitting back and letting other people, you know, do all kinds of work for you. You're also very strategic in your thinking. And this will actually help you um, in the long run against anybody who wants to interrupt what you're trying to accomplish. Now, with Capricorn women and femmes, your strength is showing it, like you don't mean for it to show but it's it's showing and a lot of people are trying to bring you down because they can see your strength they can see that you're destined for great things but with capricorn men and masculine people usually capricorn is a very formidable sign with men especially but there's something about these two weeks right that is just there's something about these two weeks in which you are being underestimated and nobody's really paying attention to what you're doing. Um, it's, it amounts to the same difference as it does for Capricorn femmes and women. If you're a masculine Capricorn or a male Capricorn, 
what you might find is that people are are underestimating you which means you have all these wonderful ideas and these brilliant ideas but you may experience that the people who actually see the brilliance of your ideas they exploit everybody else underestimating you in order to steal the ideas from under your nose so it's weird like if you're a capricorn masculine or male person you're underestimated by everybody else but the people who don't underestimate you, they're already trying to pass stuff off as their own. So what you have to do is you have to intellectually, um, you know, you have to intellectually prepare yourself and defend yourself for that type of behavior. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Capricorn male or masculine and you're not being taken seriously or you're a Capricorn femme and woman that is taken as a complete threat. It amounts to the same difference. You've got people around you who want to steal your brilliance or subdue your brilliance in order to make themselves shine that much brighter. First of all, you've got to protect your intellectual properties. Second of all, continue to do what you've been doing and that strategize and observe more than you act. And the third thing is you need to use your intuition because you've got it. You've got that intuition. You need to use your intuition to tell you whether a situation is dangerous or whether the people you're hanging around are really no good. You've got to use your intuition and use your discernment in order to understand, okay, this is not where I need to be right now. I need to be somewhere else. Truth be told, Capricorn, you might be better off working by yourself or working amongst people who are more honorable because they are there. The one thing that I will caution you against, Capricorn, is trying to do the same thing to those honourable people as what's being done to you. Do not transfer that BS. Be honourable in your dealings with people who are honourable with you. Yeah, protect yourself, be honourable, and don't feed the trolls. Because they're waiting, they're waiting for you to fail. And, I, uh, you know, it sounds really nasty, but, yeah, unfortunately, people really are that nasty. You're accomplishing things on a level that very few people are, and you're doing it without much effort, and that's causing a lot of people to be envious of you, especially if you're a Capricorn femme or woman. The resentfulness is there. The resentment is real. So just be on your guard. So that was Capricorn, that was Uttara Ashara, Shravana and Danishta. I love you, Cappy. Stay strong. Bye-bye. Hi, Aquarius. This is for Danishta, Shatavisha and Parvabhadrapada. How's it going, Aquarius? How you guys doing? So the card I've got for you, the card I have for you for the Afro-Brazilian Tarot is the Nine of Coins, Okay. So the nine of coins, it usually symbolizes really good stuff, especially when it's upright. It symbolizes you enjoying the spoils of your own work, of your own hard work as an individual. It represents self-employment interests either being started or going relatively well. It represents you basically being very shrewd and having that shrewdness work out in your favor. So it feels like financially things are finally picking up. Um, during this latter half of January, you are actually one of the more financially sound signs or financially, you know, one of the mo more financially comfortable signs um, in the Zodiac for these next two weeks. So you're actually very comfortable at the moment. And that's all a result of your own hard work, not just in the last month, but like throughout the last few months your hard work is actually paying off and you're starting to see signs of that hard work paying off. Like Capricorn, you don't have to do very much in order for yourself to succeed. But for some reason, when you are not doing that much and you're, uh, you know, you're attaining everything that you have with relative ease, um, you are not resented for it, Aquarius. In fact, for the most part, you're left alone to enjoy the spoils of your hard work. Nobody's trying to, you know, nobody tries to sabotage you. Nobody tries to do a fast one on you. You're left, you're left alone for the most part. 
there are people who might come and go, but those people are usually people who want to explore opportunities with you. So your work colleagues are okay, business interests are going well, like it's actually a relatively calm period for the Aquarians at the moment. There's nothing too drastic or dramatic about what's going on, except, like I said before, financially, you're doing quite a bit better than you have been in the last few months. But, it, you know, it was about time. It was it was that time. It was about time that was going to happen. So, you know, you're doing relatively OK. You're doing relatively well. Um, sorry, water. And once again, without much effort. So let me have a look at the notes with regards to your sign, Aquarius. So for the notes, we've got part-time work, long-term success, security and affording finery. Wow. Um, so this is one of those occasions where um, you, at this point, you're doing less work than you normally do, but you're getting more rewards than you would do if you were working harder. It's, 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 it's weird because it's like, there are times where you've worked so hard and so solidly and you've gotten very little, very little sort of rewards in return, but now you're kind of, you're taking it a bit easier and you're not doing so much. But it's at this point where financially or materially, you may find more reward just as you're starting to relax and just as you're starting to take it easy. So this is a really, really nice time for you. It's, it's a bit of a weird time, but it's a lovely time for the Aquarians. You guys are actually doing really, really well financially and in terms of support materially. Um, I don't see a lot of social play for you i see you like kind of mingling with like well fraternizing basically with those closest to you i don't see you making too many new friends but i do see you enjoying the spoils of your own hard work i do see you guys making the most of what you've been given of what spirit has blessed you with so yeah this is a really nice time for the aquarian so what else can i get for you You're healing other people as well. You're healing other people too. But you heal other people again without much effort. It's not something that you mean to do. It's just that the vibes that you give off, they heal people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was for Aquarius. That was for Danishta, Shapadisha, and Pavabhadrapada. Bye-bye. Hi Pisces, this reading is for Purva and Uttarabhadrapada and Revati. And for this reading, you have got the Hierophant from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot. Okay, so the Hierophant, I did a reading for you before, um, but the previous film, the previous edits were kind of not uploaded. So to recap, you show a side of yourself that is more authoritative and more direct and more grounded, actually. Um, there is a sort of strategic element to the way that you approach things, but it's not strategic element necessarily based on keeping your cards close to your chest so much as observing the world around you and behaving accordingly. So you will have a commanding presence, you will have a presence that commands respect. And the thing is, when Pisceans start becoming assertive and using their daddy voice, as, as it were, when, especially Piscean women, when, when Piscean women start being more assertive and less like collapsing under the weight of their own emotions, people actually respect the hell out of them. This, this is the truth. People respect the hell out of you guys when you're more like, you know, this is what I want. This is what I expect. I expect those conditions to be met. I do not want to hear any arguments. So whilst you won't abuse your power, you're unlikely to abuse your power. What I do see here is that you guys are definitely more formidable. You're more, you're stronger. You communicate more clearly because you have 
a wealth of information and education about a particular field that you're interested in backing you up. And because of that, you know exactly what to say. Now, I'm getting barony vibes from this, all right? So with barony, the thing about barony is that this is especially the case of women. They tend to be vocally articulate. So barony's articulacy lent to Piscean energy, it works out absolutely beautifully. People are more inclined to listen to you. Um, even when you have to tell the truth and the truth is harsh, people will listen to you and they like to hear it from you. So, yeah, wh whatever industry you're involved in, or even if it's something to do with your personal life, whatever it is that you're really and genuinely educated in, you will be a, you will be asked for your advice. Either you'll be asked for your advice or you will give advice unprovoked, but it will be appreciated rather than resented. Okay, so let's see what I can get for Pisces. What I've got for Pisces is female priest, nun, schools and institutions, churches within churches, sub-religions, bringing salvation, and political organisation. So I'm seeing something very, very serious for Pisceans right now. There is a serious political aspect to what you do which is why which is probably why what you're about to say is so important but again you have people who instead of naysaying you they are on board with whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish they're on board with whatever it is that you want to do that you're saying and you know I'm sorry to be inarticulate Pisces but they're very much on board with whatever it is that you want to do it might be that you are part of an organization already, but that you might splinter off and create your own organization or create your own movement that other people might be more enthusiastic about. So there's that as well. So it's it's a very serious time, but it's a successful time for Pisces. Don't get me wrong, but it's also a very serious time. It's a time where... Nothing can really be taken for granted. But luckily, you treat the situation at hand, whether it's activism or your professional life or anything to do with politics or business. Luckily, you're taking it as seriously as you need to take it, as it needs to be taken. So with you taking everything as seriously as they need to be taken and with you you know, coming into your assertiveness, but doing it in a calm and commanding fashion rather than trying to be controversial, you may end up leading the charge. You may end up being a leader or the more favoured leader of a movement in comparison to someone else. So Pisces, you may really show your authority here. You might show you know, this is what I'm destined for and this is what I'm meant for. So you might actually show your real leadership qualities here. And this is especially the case with Piscean male or masculine. You know, the Piscean males gentler than the, you know, than the Piscean females. Piscean females will be a bit more raw and a bit more tough, but it will work out beautifully for both sides. So with Pisces, yeah big things are happening and you're at the forefront and you're taking it on with all the gravitas that it deserves so whatever success you get for this period from the 16th which has gone to the 31st whatever success you manage to attain during this time you absolutely deserve so that was for pisces that was for perva and uttarabhadrapada and Revati. Thank you, Pisces. Bye-bye. Hi, Cancer. This is for Punavasu, Kushya, and Ashlesha. How's it going, Cancer? So for you from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, we have the Ten of Cups. So, oof, wow. You're another sign that's going to be taking it easy. So you're another sign who... You know, the second you stop working so hard and the second you stop putting too many obligations on yourself, 
that's when the good attention comes your way. That's when you start to attain positive notoriety or positive a positive reputation. That's when your work will start to become noticed when you stop working so hard and when you take it easy. And I, again, I know what that's like. I create like these videos which takes me hours to do, hours to upload and edit and shit like that before I can like, you know, don't let the sloppiness of the presentation fool you. There is a lot of hard work that actually goes into editing this. You know, and especially seeing as I'm not technology, you know, technologically literate. So there's a lot of work that goes into these readings. But the readings that people respond to the most are the daily readings that I do on Twitter. OK, so believe me, I know what it's like when you're working really, really hard on something and it doesn't work out the way you thought it would. But then you do something that takes you the least amount of time and effort to do and that's the thing that people respond most to so cancer what will happen with you is something very very similar to that whatever it is that takes you the least effort that's what you gain the most positive notoriety for that's what you gain the most positive attention for the thing that took the least effort for you to do it might be a sign for you to flow more naturally with life rather than forcing yourself against the current and trying to be something that you're not. It might be a sign that that's what you need to do, Cancer. Because, you know, really pay attention to what gets you the most positive attention. Whatever it is, that's where you should put your energy at this point. But the thing is, the interesting thing about you, Cancer, is that unlike Capricorn who seem to be just getting the most resentment for, you know, for doing what you do. Like, they, they seem to be getting the most resentment for it. When it comes to you, Cancer, you taking it easy and, you know, getting what you want without seemingly working too much for it, it actually works out in your favour. With Cancer women and femmes, you're not seen as that much of a threat. So when you get what you want and when you accomplish what you want, People are rooting for you. With cancer males and masculine, you're taken just seriously enough for people to pay attention to what you've been doing, but it, not so seriously that people can see you as too much of a threat. So whether you're cancer feminine or cancer masculine, it amounts to the same thing. People want you to win. I don't know why this is, okay? But people want you to win. I would give the same advice to you as I would give to Capricorn. Pay attention to your intuitions when it comes to being around other people. Protect your work in whatever way you can. You know, protect the work that you do so that your ideas are yours. And also, um, you know, uh, what, what was the third thing that I said for Capricorn? Yeah, I said, I said to, I think I said to, um, be strategic with your actions. Yeah, that's it. That's the third thing. Be strategic with your actions. So you want to do the same thing as Capricorn's doing, but you're doing it for completely opposite reasons. It's not because people see you as a threat and don't want you to win. In your case, it's because people do want you to win. They do want you to do well. They do want you to fulfill your objectives and fulfill your dreams. People are 100% behind you, especially if you have Cancer Moon or Cancer Ascendant. People want you to win. So whatever it takes for you to fulfill that, fulfill that. And whilst you're at it, help Capricorn out, please. Uh, please. <laughs> please. They need, they need you right now, please. Just, just help them out in whatever way you can. Like, just... That they're, they're, they're going through it right now because they're on the same trajectory of achieving their dreams and their goals that you are. But for some reason, people don't people don't want to see them win. Please help them out in whatever way you can. Get people off their backs, certain, you know, because you've got so many people who are willing you to win and willing you to do well. So from the notes, I've got fame and fortune and a happy social life. There are people 
who um, I think exes will come back into your life. There will be friends of yours that will come back into your life. Um, oh, oh my. Um, there are people that um, were attracted to you before. So if, for some of you cancers, there were people that attracted to you before that thought they were over you. And then as soon as they saw you again, they realized, no, I'm not over this person. Find some kind of closure with them because there's a lot of passion between you and this other person that you need to explore together. I, I, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's just my libido talking, but like I feel like with cancers, there's another person in play. If you're polyamorous or you're single, you should definitely pursue this, okay? There's someone that you thought you were over and that you thought you could live without and you could live without them. They feel the exact same way about you and when you see each other again, the passion's palpable. And I feel like that needs closure or that needs exploration. Like, do you understand what I mean? Within reason and respecting other people's feelings and being ethical about it. But if you come across some old flames and the attraction is still palpably there, you need to have some sort of satisfactory closure that will either allow you to both move on apart or both move on together. And I think this is due to Perva Ashara and barony so it's likely that whoever it is whoever these people are they're very much tied to your self-actualization and tied to your work but also they may be people that you have open enmity with but deep down behind the scenes they love you and you love them so it's it's weird it's weird like just watch out for that cancer just watch out for that but you're happy, your social life looks great, and your love life looks great, so um, you're getting a lot more positive attention without trying, so just enjoy it, enjoy it for now, and lend, if you can, lend some of that energy to pe towards people who might find themselves being besieged by haters, uh, no, I'm not supposed to say that, I'm supposed to say, you, you got to focus on your own self, like, no, there's a time for everything, and this is the time to be a little bit kind with what you have. So, that was for Cancers. That was for Ponabasu, Pusha, and Ashlesha. Mm -hmm. Bye, Cancer. Hi, Aries. This is for Ashvini, Barony, and Kritika. And right now, we've got the Knight of Wands, and I can't think of anything more apt for your sign than the knight of wands right now because it is all passion all action all dynamism whatever it is that you're truly interested in and truly trying to accomplish there's a new fire underneath your ass that's making it all happen now you normally have a fire underneath your ass anyway but it's materializing more and more and it's just there's lots of quick action lots of quick focused action it's not just mindless it's focused action and your passion is the driving force behind all that quick, focused action, okay? And I did a reading for you before, um, but the clips didn't upload, so I've got, to, I've got to reiterate it again. It's important for you to note this, okay? You're not malicious. You're not being malicious on purpose, but the way that you're feeling right now is that if people are not on your wavelength or people are not fulfilling, you know, their own passions or they're not as driven or as focused as you, the likelihood is, is that you might leave them behind. And ordinarily, I'm supposed to say, well, you have to be mindful of other people's feelings. Ashwini and Barini, especially, like you don't have time for that. You don't have time to be out here, you know, trying to appeal to everyone's emotions. Knowing you, you will understand. You will understand where people are coming from if they're not as focused or they're not as determined as you. 
because deep down you're a very emotional sign Aries and you will recognize that the weaknesses that other people display are weaknesses you had once upon a time so you're not unsympathetic but you understand that you're human and there's only so much you can do and whilst you're focused on something that you're passionate about and your head is you know all the way in positive things and positive endeavors and someone wants to bring you down by talking about the past or trying to make you feel bad about something um it's like you can't entertain that and you're right not to entertain that because right now is not the time to be mired in our emotions and mired in our you know in our feelings and in our heart we're dead in the fucking ass crack of winter we do not have time to be doing anything less than hustling right now the sun is only out for like a few hours a day we do not have the time for it we have to be direct and active and strong and focused on our passion so Aries you're leading the way in terms of what people need to be focused on okay so for this card right here Aries I've got making hard work look easy yes man strong alliance charismatic thrill seeker determined leader um, you will be leading people but it will be more by example rather than you being overly bossy I know that I've said that barony has a tendency to be bossy and to and try to enforce rules on people. That's true, but there's less of a tendency towards that um, for the Aryans for this time period. There's less emphasis on you trying to control people and you trying to make everything your way. And there's more emphasis on you leading by example. You're more likely to lead by example than you are to try to tell other people what to do because that, that's just not your style first of all that's not your style anyway a lot of people say Aryans are bossy but you're actually not that bossy when people really start start to think about the way you communicate and the way that you do things when you are listened to with your actions when your actions are paid attention to and you don't have to do that much talking you're actually very laid back and you're actually not that bossy and you're actually not that strident. It's just that you're not listened to the first time, which leads you to feel frustrated. But, you know, with regards to this time period, there's less emphasis on bossiness and more emphasis on you just leading by example. You're leading by your passion. You're leading by what it is that you really want to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? And those who are not on that same same wavelength as you as wanting to succeed in life if there are people who are just sycophantic and just want to hang on to your coattails bro just let them loose let let them loose it, it's not worth it just let them loose because if they're going to hang on to your coattails try to ride on your success in order to feel like they can be motivated it's not going to help you and it's not going to help them drop them at the same time, on the fortunate side, it looks like you might have strong alliances with people who seem vulnerable on the outside, but on the inside are actually very ambitious and dynamic. Those are the types of people that you might find yourself aligning yourself with. I'm getting cancer, actually. Um, you might be aligned with cancers who seem vulnerable and laid back on, you know, on the outside, but the success surrounding them implies that on the inside, they have been doing a lot of damn work. They have been really, really like getting the work done. So you might find strong alliances with people like that. Um, again, um, people are not resentful, but people do want to kind of siphon off your strength and you can't really allow that. Stick to people who are useful to you. And I know it sounds really opportunistic and you know, and, and problematic, but stick to people who are actually useful to you and who don't cause you problems. Do you know what I mean? So that was for Aries. That was for Ashvini, Barony and Kritika. Bye-bye. Hi, Scorpio. This is for Vishaka, Anuradha and Jester. Now, Okay, so for you, for the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, you've got the Judgment card. 
okay? So, Scorpio, what I get from you is that there's a, a, there's a real rationality about your thought processes. Now, the thing about Martian signs, right, is that they're usually hyper sane. And what that means is that on the outside, this is what it means to me anyway. It means that on the outside, they seem to do the craziest and most irrational things. And their impatience boils over to the point where they do the right thing, but they do it at the wrong time because they're in a rush, right? But beneath that, there is a lot of common sense and a lot of wise judgment. Where you're concerned, Scorpio, is that that rationality and that wise judgment, it makes its way into your actions. So the, things, the thing about you, Scorpio, is that you reveal yourself to be a very wise and fair person. And this is especially the case with Jeshta. Jeshta has the biggest mouth out of all the Scorpionic signs. So, of course, it stands to reason that you're likely to be the fairest. You're, you're, you're villainized quite often, but you're actually the fairest of the Scorpio signs. You're the ones who are actually the most rational, the most loyal, the most likely to give people their fair shot. You're very critical, but you give people their fair shot. You constantly do that. Only in this case, for the next few for the next couple of weeks, Scorpios as a whole, you're more inclined to actually vocalize the rationality that you have in your mind and you're more inclined to act on that rationality rather than behaving irrationally. You're, you're more likely to not behave irrationally this time. And this is wonderful, but it, it's the problem with that is, is that people who are used to you being a firebrand or, or being the first person to kick off, people who are used to you doing that, they might be scared of what that means for them because there are certain people in your life that have been very, very comfortable using you as a weapon to fight their battles or using your emotions, like weaponizing your emotions against someone else. So there are, pe there are people who have felt very comfortable weaponizing your most powerful strengths or powerful flaws against any one of their enemies, like they've been very comfortable doing that. But because you're starting to become more like yourself and you're starting to release your more rational side, um, now you're starting to understand how you've been used as a pawn for other people's bullshit. And now you, you're starting to understand how people who are more petty than you and people who are more, you know, people who are less respectful and more petty than you are, now you're starting to understand how they've led you astray and you're not impressed. Okay? Now you're, you're un starting to understand how they've led you astray and how they've used you and used your powerful emotions in order to get something out of you and you're not impressed. But again, because you're allowing yourself to be rational and you're allowing yourself to bring your common sense to the forefront, instead of acting on anything immediately, you're observing things and you're observing people. You already know what you're looking at. It's not that you don't know what you're looking at. It's just that you know if you don't observe more than you act and you don't observe before you act, you know it's going to lead to problems. So this time you're like, nah, let me chill. I can see these people for what they are, but let me chill for now. Just sit and ponder. And then when I've done enough observation then I'll decide what to do. So you're being wise and you're taking a step back and you're, you're, you're analysing personal situations, professional situations, even romantic situations. So for the notes, I've got taking a note, studying, power struggles and truth seeker. You are the truth seeker in the equation and the people 
that have relied on you and used you as a weapon they are the ones who are struggling engaging in power struggles with you um because they're afraid of what it means for them they're afraid of losing you because they know the type of power that you have and they know the type of sway that you have so if they lose you what happens to them if they lose you what happens to them but that can't be your concern and i think you know that because what you're interested in is getting to the bottom of particular situations not in your past but particular situations in the present it's important to you to get to the bottom of them so that you can understand exactly what's been happening and how to solve the problem that is your only priority right now and just like Aries if anybody gets in the way of what you're trying to do you will leave them behind only in your case the way you leave them behind is not just by telling them to piss off it's, it's just it's like you'll quietly back away from those people do you know what I mean so there's a measured quality about the Scorpios at this time period um, you're not taking any crap, but it's not in a way that's violent or confrontational. In fact, it's very much the opposite. It's very measured. So that was for Scorpio. That was for Vishaka, Anuradha and Jeshta. Bye, Scorpio. Hi, Leo. So this reading is for Maga, Perva Palguni and Uttara Palguni. And for the Afro-Brazilian... Afro-Brazilian Tarot, we have the Three of Cups. So, what can we see for Leo? Well, usually the Three of Cups signifies uh, more of a social life. There's more people that you can congregate with. But I, what I actually see here is relationships going from strength to strength. There are a certain amount of birds here and it, I want to count the birds because the birds represent a new phase of life so we've got one two hang on oh we've got three birds oh we've got two we've got two salmon oh my gosh okay so wisdom the salmon represents wisdom so it feels like a lot of Leos will make wise choices about their social life. And then we've got the birds here. So we've got, I think we've got about three birds and three dragonflies. So we've got three of everything at the top, but at the bottom, there's two salmon, two fish together. I feel like some Leos will get married or engaged. I feel like some Leos will um, will either meet the love of their life or meet somebody that they think is the love of their life and they will marry that person. For other Leos, I feel like the love, if you're taken, that the love you already have, even if you're not married, it feels like the love that you two have for each other is so strong that it's having a positive effect on the rest of your social life. So it feels like if you're single, it might be that you're doing something that you love so much that it's bringing more happy social gatherings to you or more happy social occurrences for you. So it feels like if you're doing something that you love, it, it's so strong, the love for it is so strong that you're actually attracting positive people into your life for friendships and potential romantic interests. If you're a Leo who's already taken, then the love that you have with that person is so powerful, it's permeating the rest of your life. It's permeating your career. Your career is taking off. It's permeating your finances. Your finances are taking off. It's permeating your work. Even your work is doing well in spite of everything that's happening. So it feels like the love that you receive and I feel like your fifth and your ninth are, are playing a part. So there's good fortune as well. There's a lot of good fortune for the Leos. It feels like the love that you have is so strong that everything else is just working out exactly the way it's supposed to. 
So whilst I won't say that your social life goes crazy, the new friends that you do have or the, you know, the acquaintances that you already have, they go from strength to strength because you reveal more and more of the truest parts of your nature rather than the Leo who insists that everything operate around them that's not the real you the real you is the person that is you know that is more laid back that is more chilled out that likes to be free like a bohemian so that that bohemian aspect that makes up the real the real part of what a you know what a leo actually is like because people respond so favorably to that it will lead to so many new opportunities. You will be shocked at how many new opportunities your new attitude leads you to. And like I said before, there's marriage on the cards. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but regardless of whether or not that marriage is healthy, what spirit, the lesson that spirit gives you from that union you're able to take forward and become even more powerful with it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you get involved in toxic unions. That's not what I'm saying. It's, that's not a good idea for anybody to do. What I'm reassuring you is that whether your union is a mistake or not, the lessons that you gather from that marriage or from that union will be so powerful, you will accomplish so much more than you did than you did if you would never have ended up with this person so this is a very very powerful time for leos right now and the irony is is that again you're not strident about it you're absolutely chill you're chilling you're chilling you're not you're not like you know you're not putting too much pressure on anything you're not you're not doing too much you're just chilling you're chilling in a cup do you understand what I mean? So, oof. So you got, I mean, you got the Leos chilling in a cup, and you guys are attracting from the love and the passion that you put into specific, specific areas of your life. That has a huge positive result for everything else in your life. And I know it doesn't make much sense the way that I've said it, but it will make sense when you start to see how everything unfolds. So the Leos, it's looking good for the next couple of weeks for you guys. It's looking real good for the Leos. Oh, shit. Um, um, Leos... Um, I'm getting the message that for Leos who have been obsessed with finding the one, you might find the one. Please don't worry if you don't. Please don't worry if, if it turns out not to be the case, okay? Please don't, please don't worry about it. But some Leos, either you, you may find the one during this time or you've already found them. Be very, very, be very aware of what's happening. Just pay attention. Pay very close attention to what's around you. But, you know, I'm not saying that things won't go wrong and I'm not saying that everything will be perfect. Nothing's perfect. But if I honestly can't get anything negative for you at this moment, Leo, it means that whatever negative things take place, they dwarf in comparison to the rewards. So just be aware of that. Enjoy, relax into it, release the outcome, release any attachments to the outcome. Just let yourself enjoy the good fortune. So anyway, that was for Leo. That was for Maga, Tagapalgoni and Uttarapalgoni. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Sage. How's it going, Sagittarius? This is for Mula and Purva and Uttara Ashara. So how's it going, Sag? So from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, what we've got for you is the Hermit card. Okay. Now, the Hermit card is usually to do with being solitary or 
being like just keeping to yourself but i feel like the sagittarians once again i get that feeling of you being extremely powerful the image that i get in my mind is that of not just a university professor or a college professor but somebody who's eminent in their field those are the vibes that i get for you you i get the vibes for you that whatever it is that you've been learning behind the scenes you become so expert in it that you kind of overtake people who are supposed to be a level above you so there are people who might be making more money than you or might be more successful than you business wise but when it comes to their actual craft you're the one leading the charge or you're the one teaching other people what they need to know okay this is the period where you really start to realize your worth in whatever it is that you're doing it doesn't matter if it's creative it doesn't matter if it's banking it doesn't matter if it's you know it could be fucking plumbing or building there's something about you as an unqualified person that knows more than qualified people and when it becomes clear that you know more than people who are actually more qualified than you that's when you start to realize okay i've been selling my selling myself way short here it's time it's time to change i feel like as a result along with aquarius you will be the most materially wealthy sign for this time period you you'll be the most materially abundant because you realize your worth very, very quickly. And you start to realize, what am I doing here? Like, why, why, am I, why am I charging so little for what I do? Why am I not charging anything at all that I need to be charging more? So you realizing your worth means that you may charge more for your services, which is exactly what you need to do. But in charging more, you filter out anybody who's not serious about your services and you bring in people who are serious about your services. And once people see what you have to offer, there are people who are pricier than you that might find themselves undercut. So what you actually want to do, Sagittarius, is charge high. Now, I watched this video called Girls with, I think, Girls with Dogs or something. Um, girls who, a, a girl who grooms dogs or something like that. Um let me find them on youtube so it's a youtube lady and she grooms animals for a living i think she comes from jersey or something somewhere like that she comes from the u.s anyway and she says that one of the things she learned about being a you know an animal groomer is to never start off with a lower price always start off as high as you can get away with and the reason for that is that you attract people who won't waste your time and i feel like Sagittarius that's what you need whatever services that you're providing or whatever you are proficient in in terms of your education you need to start high if you haven't already you need to start high and attract people who are actually serious and who actually want to take the work that you do seriously what you don't want to attract is people who are going to come in and waste your fucking time because there are people who are more qualified than you that know about a fraction of the stuff that you know. It's about recognizing your worth. I said charge, damn it. It's about recognizing your worth and charging more for your services. Okay? So for your sign, for the notes I've got, teaching leadership, politics, Teaching teachers and legal advisor, like I said before, there are people who are more qualified than you that don't know half of what you know. And you may have more political power as well, some of you. Um, there, are, there are things unrelated to your actual field that you're in that you might have more sway in politically. Um, you may become more politically active but you will command more attention as somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And you may be called upon more in an advisory capacity 
you may be called on more in an advisory capacity and you more may be called on more to to actually provide some insight as to what's happening politically that other people aren't seeing. So it's a very powerful time for the Sages. It's um it's not that it's not a bad time or anything, but January is a very serious month anyway, so of course it would be serious for the Sages. But um I can see you guys making bank from some of the choices that you make. And I feel like much of what I've advised you to do, you already decided to do that so it feels like you will have a lot more success during this time than you normally do and to be quite honest with you you've actually had a pretty good few months so you may be more successful during this time than you have been in a while and that's saying something that's no mean feat so that was for Sagittarius that was for Mula and Parva and Uttara Ashara I love you guys so much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Hi, Libra. This is for Chitra, Sparti, and Vishaka. And the card that I have for you is the Justice card. Okay. So before I get into the notes, let me intuit what I can see for, for the Libras now. So from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, we've got the justice card okay so what do we see for librans with regards to this card i feel like many of you may be resting on that familiar territory of not wanting to rock the boat i feel like you're resting way too much on way too, wanting to make other people feel comfortable rather than doing what's right for yourself the higher aspect of justice is one that recognizes the value of boundaries and the value of keeping yourself to yourself and standing by your own ethical codes. So the justice card is reminding you, do not rest on this arbitrary or, you know, or very, very subjective view of what fairness is. Instead, hold true to your integrity and hold true, hold true to what you know to be true. Hold true to your, your own code of ethics and you use that, use that to do what's right for everybody around you. It's like I explained in the very beginning of this reading with regards to January revelations. It's all about inner self-sacrifice and outer self-assertion. That is what you need to be doing, but right now you're doing it the other way around. You've got the inner self-assertion and the outer self-sacrifice which is not something you want to do at this time so all of this interest in fairness it leads to things being anodyne and compromised especially professionally and that's something that you actually want to avoid you have ideas that you want to put forward fine protect those ideas but you have ideas that you want to put forward speak up for yourself if somebody tries to take credit Okay, speak up for yourself. Don't allow anybody to take anything away from you in the interest of, in the interest of keeping the peace because it's not going to help you if you do that. Speak up for yourself, stand up for yourself. Um, if there is something that you want to do or want to accomplish, go for it because at the end of the day, this outer selfishness, it leads to you doing what's, what's better for the greater good in that sense. So following common sense and following your own integrity is what's going to get you through these next two weeks, okay? So with that in mind, let's read the notes for you. So for the notes, we've got common sense, unwritten laws, divine timing, women's rights, psychic detective. Um, I get the feeling that you've been ignoring your intuition, Libra, and I'm not entirely sure why. Because your intuition is on point in terms of exactly what you're supposed to be accomplishing. But for some reason, you're ignoring this. Like, why? You need to think to yourself, okay, what do I need to do at this moment? What do I need to do at this time? How do I need to proceed forward? In fact, you don't even need to think it out. You need to feel it out. 
you need to intuit exactly what next actions you need to take in a way that makes you feel comfortable and in a way that aligns you with spirit and what spirit is trying to accomplish. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about maintaining your inner integrity because you've got to follow what you feel and what you want in order to ultimately put yourself in destiny's way. Okay, you cannot put yourself outside destiny's way. You have to make sure that you're actually following common sense rather than just doing what other people want you to do. And with regards to women's rights and psychic detectives, again, your intuition is giving you all the signals that you need in order to, to proceed forward with a plan or, you know, a long term goal. And you're just ignoring it. You need to stop doing that. Fuck fairness at this point. You need to go with, at the moment, what is best for me and what is best for what I'm trying to accomplish. It's like the women, you know the women with Bette Midler's character. She said, forget everyone. Life always gets better when you start to think, what's in it for me? And there's a lot of truth to that. Things do get better. And... Things do work out when you start to think to yourself, well, what can I benefit from the situation? How does that work in my interest? Because you end up doing things that, in the long run, benefit everyone else as well. So when it comes to professional situations in particular, do not let your voice be drowned out. Make your voice heard. I don't care if it ruffles feathers. Make your voice heard. So... Yeah, what else can I get for Libra? Yep, I think that's it. That was for Libra. That was for Chitra, Svati and Vishaka. I love you so much, my fellow... Well, not my fellow Librans, but, you know. I love you so much, Libras. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, Virgo. This reading is for Uttara Palguni, Hasta and Chitra. How's it going, Virgos? So from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, we have the Seven of Cups, okay? Now, what I'm getting from this is that um, you might be a little bit frazzled at the moment. Um, it might be that you feel like a lot of your workload is getting on top of you and that things are just kind of spiraling out of control in terms of how much responsibility you've got to undertake. The thing that I would advise you to do is something that I learned from Mark H. McCormick when it, from a book called What They Don't Teach You in Harvard Business School. Now, what I would advise Virgos to do is instead of creating your rest period around your work, to instead create your work or develop your work schedule around your rest period. The reason I say that is because your rest period is not just dependent on what you're physically able to do. It's also based upon what you can emotionally cope with. That's what actually goes into your resting period. We're not just talking about physical rest. We're also talking about emotional rest. So making time for both or prioritizing both over your work, it seems counterproductive. But what it actually does is it makes you more intensely focused. It gives you tighter deadlines upon which to complete your work, which kind of fires you off on all cylinders and makes you want to complete the work as quickly and to the best of your ability as possible. The more pressure you put yourself under to complete it before your rest period comes, is the more likely you are to produce good work and produce good work quickly. This is why I always say create your work around your rest and not the other way around. Doing it the other way around is just going to leave you burnt out and it's just going to make you less efficient in the long run. OK, so if you're feeling frazzled, Virgo, which you're likely to be because you've got a lot going on and you may be feeling emotionally burnt out, not physically burnt out. If you're feeling emotionally burnt out, rework your schedule and rework it around your rest period rather than placing your rest around your work period if that makes sense so 
that's my advice for Virgos going into this. That's before I've read the notes, okay? So for the notes, I've got online friends, poor time management and confusion. Um, usually when you are behind in your work, the best thing to do is just to crank it out, crank it out, crank it out. But actually, what I'm going to advise is that if you find your work too overwhelming and you find you're behind in your work in a way that you don't need to be, that you actually need to take some time off from it. Not completely, but take enough time off from it to refresh yourself emotionally. And after you've done that, you will find that when you come back to the work that you're supposed to be doing, you'll feel way more refreshed. And I know a lot of people are going to cry, that's not true, that's not true. You shouldn't tell people that. Listen, the older you get, the more you realise that the subscribed way of working does not work for everyone. And Virgos, you're usually very efficient and you're usually very, very hardworking and you usually like to get things done to a perfect standard all the time and you will work day and night until you get that perfection that you're craving for. But I'm telling you that that perfection and that need to crank things out as quickly as possible, it's going to badly affect your psyche. And when your psyche is badly affected, then your work is badly affected. So that's another thing you need to consider. You need to consider dropping the perfectionist attitude when it comes to your career or when it comes to your passion projects. Even your work, you need to drop the perfectionist stuff. Because it's better that you do something poorly, especially in the early stages. You know, when you can afford to make a mistake, it's okay to do things poorly then. But it's, it, you know, the further along that you go, allowing yourself to make mistakes, allowing yourself to make mistakes is the more quickly that you actually learn from those mistakes. So allowing yourself to do things poorly or to do, like to fuck things up, like just occasionally, especially in the early stages of your work or the early stages of any projects that you're doing, allowing yourself to fuck up is very, very crucial to your ability to learn more quickly from what you're doing. So allowing yourself to make mistakes, revolving your rest around your work around your rest period and not the other way around. And ensuring that you take breaks often, especially when the workload is especially big. You've got to take breaks often and come back to work. Otherwise, it gets to a point where you just can't face it. The workload is too much. You just can't face it. And then you end up neglecting it for like a couple of weeks and then coming back to it when it's the last night, a deadline or something like that. And that's not something that you want to do. So emotionally take care of yourself. Make sure that you aren't burnt out. You need to get plenty of rest emotionally and physically. You need to get plenty of it and not burn yourself out. That's the way that you become more efficient. So what else can I see for you guys? Um, I can't see anything really going on with your social life or it's actually quite quiet at the moment. There's not there's nothing really going on for the Virgos. Um, the work that I'm talking about is work that's already been in place for the last few days or weeks now. Um, it's nothing new. It's nothing that you haven't already done. It's just that you need to take a while to decompress from it. Do you understand what I mean? Instead of getting things done as quickly as possible and then running out of steam. So yeah, nothing new with regards to social life or anything like that. It's actually quite a quiet a quiet couple of weeks with the Virgos, honestly. Um, it, it's nothing too crazy. It's just, um, you just need to rest at the moment. It's quiet for a reason. So that was for Virgos. That was for Otara Palguni, Hasta and Chitra. Bye-bye. Hi, Gemini. This reading is from Ruga Shira, Ardra and Punabasu. How's it going, Geminis? So for you, we've got the King of Wands and the King of Wands is a very special card. I do like the King of Wands, actually. Um, the King of Wands is somebody that has made a significant impact in other people's lives through doing what they love to do or through following their passions. Um, I don't know if it's as dramatic as that for the Geminis this time around, 
but it does feel like the bigger picture is being thought about in terms of how you want to manifest what it is that you're most interested in. Um, it feels like you've actually considered how your passions and how your vocations fit into your life in general and exactly what you want to prioritize in terms of your life overall. It feels like your passions actually might be taking a back seat in comparison to more important endeavors like the work that you're doing or you know you paying bills or your home life or your family so it might actually feel like some of you are having your passions take a back seat in favor of what's truly important which is usually the opposite of king of wands king of wands is usually about the big life picture and the big life picture is often dictated by your passions but it feels like whilst you are thinking about your passions you're also thinking about like the bigger picture of your life and in your mind you feel like certain things can wait you know i can't believe i'm about to say this about gemini's but some gemini's are feeling like my life does not have to be about passion all the time sometimes it can be about the boring stuff sometimes it can be about the stuff that needs doing but that's all part and parcel of looking at things, looking at the bigger picture of things, isn't it? Like remembering that the boring parts of life are just as important as, you know, how do I put this? The boring parts of life are just as important as, you know, the exciting parts or the passionate parts. They're just as worthy. They're just as important. They're just as worthwhile as thinking about the you know, the bigger picture stuff or the stuff that's passionate or the stuff that's really exciting. So it feels like even though the King of Wands makes an appearance and the King of Wands is like a pretty a pretty damn serious card in terms of passions, um, it feels like you're thinking more about your overall life picture than anything else. Do you understand what I'm saying? So with that in mind, let's have a look at your notes for this for this time period. So we've got fast-paced leader, competitive leader, success, and strong-minded leader. Yeah, so that falls in line with what I've been saying about you prioritizing the more boring stuff in your life over your passions. It's not that your passions aren't there. You're still thinking about them and you're still making plans accordingly. But it's just that at this time, you are more inclined to think about what actually needs to be done. You're less inclined to think about, you know, yourself or what you want. You're thinking about the people around you and what they need. And with that, you take charge of a lot of matters, especially if you're a Gemini femme or a woman. You might take over particular matters like household bills or investments. Anything to do with finances or anything to, important to do with taxes, you're more likely to stay on top of. Because now you're thinking to yourself, okay, these play a part in how I'm able to enjoy my life and how the people around me can enjoy their lives. This is actually really, really important stuff that I need to be paying attention to. So right now, even though the King of Wands is present, it's more representative of you thinking of the larger picture of your life than of the larger picture of following your passions it's more likely that you're going to be thinking about the serious stuff than you are going to be thinking about the frivolous and passionate stuff. If I would advise anything, it's that to keep your passions in the back of your mind. I advised Virgo that you should create your work schedule around your rest period rather than the other way around. And I feel like Gemini's, you need to do the same thing only with regards to your passions rather than your resting period. When it comes to your passions, you need to revolve your daily life in your work and the important shit around what you actually love to do. And I feel like this is why the King of Wands is here is because it is advising you on what to do rather than reflective of what you're actually doing right now, even though I'm contradicting what I said five minutes ago. But, you know, it's right now you need to revolve the serious stuff around the fun stuff because once again it's about efficiency it's not about you being able to just do what you want it's about efficiency 
it's not about frivolity it's not about levity and i know it's easy from this perspective to feel like it is but it's not it's actually a practical life decision that you're making by revolving the serious aspects of your life around the fun aspects of your life so that was for gemini that was for nigashira adra and ponavasu i love you so much gemini's Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have the Taurians. This is for Kritika, Rohini, and Mrigashira. So what can we get for you guys? Well, from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, we've got the Six of Cups. Okay. So... I'm going to be real with you, Taurus. The past is still coming up with regards to you guys, okay? Um, the tower that I got for the last, the previous two weeks of January, that was actually the worst of it. Now it's the calming down period. It's the period where you faced the appropriate recriminations for what you've done or what, you know, or what past events have been pretty ugly, but it feels like this time around, um, wh whilst, you know, the, the previous couple of weeks, it was actually you that was the problem because you weren't facing up to what you were doing. At this point, it feels like it's not you that's the problem anymore. It feels like even though you're not all the way facing up to your own flaws, you're facing up to them just enough to let yourself be vulnerable in front of yourself you're letting yourself be just vulnerable enough to be honest with yourself and to think to yourself okay well maybe i could have done that better or maybe i could have done that better you won't admit it to the people but you will admit it to yourself okay you will admit it to yourself and you will be like okay well i could have done that differently so you're coming around the problem is is that because you're not coming around to the people that have confronted you they're thinking that you haven't faced up to anything when that's not the case. So it's actually them that are making assumptions and them that are continuing on the pettiness when you've already made up your mind to face up to things privately and to face up to things in your own way. They're the ones bringing it up, not you. So it's like you have to kind of, now you have to kind of think to yourself, okay, well, I'm facing it up to myself, to myself. And I'm not suggesting that you be unsympathetic to the people who are confronting you. I'm not suggesting that. But what I am suggesting is that you give yourself a chance. Because from time you've admitted to yourself and, you know, what you did was wrong or, or you handled a certain situation wrong. Once you admit that to yourself, you've already done the hardest part of the work. You've already completed the hardest part. The hardest part is us admitting to ourselves when we fucked up. It's not admitting it to other people. So the fact that you've admitted it to yourself, you've already done the hard work. You've already looked within and you've already... Do you know how difficult it is for a Taurian to look inward? And that hard work is something that should not be taken for granted. So if other people want to make a big deal out of how you've approached things, then... It, 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 honestly there's nothing you can nothing you can do and there's nothing you can say because they've already made up their minds not to forgive you so there's nothing you can do about that all you can do is try to forgive yourself whilst being honest with yourself and i feel like you're making a lot of progress when it comes to allowing yourself to be vulnerable and allowing yourself to have that space to be like okay well i have regrets i just want to move forward I just want to move past it and it's not like you're sorry exactly but it's like you acknowledge other people's feelings about a situation but you just want to move forward okay so for you for the notes we've got following your heart nostalgia living in the past and asking for a favor so again it's not you that's living in the past it's not you that keeps rehashing shit. It's other people that, that keep rehashing shit. Your mind is firmly in the present. And your mind is firmly 
in what you're supposed to do right now, which is a good thing, okay? Um, I feel like you need help emotionally, but it feels like you need help emotionally with something separate. It's not. It's got nothing to do with what I'm actually talking about, but you need help emotionally with something separate. Maybe you're grieving or you're still grieving over something that other people think you should have gotten over. It fits a death. Understand that there's no time stipulation on how how long it takes for you to accept death or get over a death. It's fucking death. death. Just like death is permanent, when somebody that you love dies, you may never get over it. You can accept it. You can, you know, you can accept that they're gone you can accept that you know what's happened but you might not actually get over them dying or them leaving you because that shit is permanent how do you get over something that's permanent you can move on with your life you can accept what's happened but what you need help with is accepting that not only has this thing happened or has this loss happened you need or you also need help accepting that you may never get over it and you may never be the same you also need help in realizing that that's not a bad reflection on you it's not a bad reflection on who you are as a person it's not a bad reflection on your emotional capacity to handle things at all you know, you're not in the wrong just because you can't get over shit. A lot of people, a lot of people find it more difficult to get over less than what you've gone through. So you need somebody to come in and be like, you know what? I understand what you're going through. I'm here for you. No judgment. No, you should have done this. Just allowing you to feel and allowing you that space. Okay, that's what you need right now. So yeah, so that was for Taurus, that was for Kritika, Rohini, and Mugashira. I love you, Taurians. Bye-bye.